Our lesson today is titled Temporary versus Eternal in Life and Death. Focus not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 Within our lives, there are things which we know are visible to us. In those invisible things, which are all about us, of which we speak and write endlessly. As you read, or oh, hopefully listen, to this, your mind has already started making the list of seen and unseen. There is also a special category of hybrid things that are both unseen and seen at certain parts of their process or effect. So with these, you can, theoretically, see some portion of its effect or process, and then at other portions they remain fully unseen. It is in the mind, the heart, or the body of all those who initiated it. Faith is unseen, but religion is the physical manifestation of faith. Religion formalizes all of the relationships and relies upon the people of the religious order to organize, organize themselves, to create the rites, the prayers, and bring all the believers and followers together all under the same rules or commandments, and all others into the fold. The exchange of information is both seen and unseen, especially in the process of learning. We can't see what is occurring in our minds, nor can we see what is happening when our heart is captured of an ideal in faith, or it begins to grasp hold and to start believing in a political movement or a politician, an individual. But the seen part are the changes in your speech and the behavior as you begin to profess their same values, the same mantra as that one politician. If this is the same value as a parent showed, you'll be proud to show it, and the parent will also be proud, for they were involved in that transfer of information. A unique form of informational exchange occurs in faith by bearing witness. Bearing witness for one's faith is someone emphasizing their joy, their love and fulfillment of the living through and following of the rules of the teachings of the leader of that faith, like Christ. This is the way to bring someone into the faith. They see your joy and they want some of that joy too. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. John fifteen fifteen. Love is unseen and seen. For the many manifestations of love, the very many expressions of the feeling, whether it be platonic, parental, sibling love, romantic, secure or intimate love, to name just a few of the varieties of love that are all expressed each and every day. In faith, the love is pure and it is, it is uniquely separate and it is a force that can move mountains. Loving Jesus 
and being loved by Jesus is so very special for his love is all encompassing. This is an eternal being that loves you now and always and loving him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your body, and all of your soul feels so inefficient, like there should be more of you, that you can do something else. My Papa Bear, DJ as he is called, Papa Bear was in politics forever political processes being uniquely seen and unseen at the same time. I met my first politician during the 1968 presidential campaign. DJ worked for his first politician then, nicknamed the Happy Warrior. The Vice President of the United States, Hubert H. Humphrey. Now, being three and a half years old, I was an easy constituent. I thought the grandpa man was great. He had a stuffed animal, a donkey, in his office. Bigger than me! So I thought this was great. The grandpa man let me ride on his donkey on a cart. How many other people do you know who at three and a half years old were riding a stuffed donkey around the office of the Vice President of the United States? They were looking for votes. I told them I would look on the floor to find all the ones that had fallen down. They could have all the ones I found. Over the next 35 years, DJ's client list included another Vice President of the United States, the late Walter Fritz Monday, Senators galore, including the late Paul Wellstone, 12 other presidential candidates, dozens upon dozens of congressional representatives, legislator representatives, until they're up to your ears, business groups, and single issue bills. All were well, well represented by my brilliant father, who knew almost all of the races going on in the country at the very same time, what their issues were, and how each would be run. He taught me how to listen to the news, how to parse a story, how to weigh a campaign news release and hear the truth, and how to lose without breaking your heart. DJ created a company with a groundbreaking idea for lobbying, such that in my graduate courses, 30 years later, they were still talking about him. The first thing he decided was you needed to educate the voters at home, using the media Teach them about the bill, but use humor or use a little bit of sorrow because those two emotions would log it into their long-term memory so that they would then be activated to do something. Number two is activate the voters to call. This was 1970s, the 1980s, and into the 1990s. So it was always a local number, because there were no cell phones then, or if they were, they weighed 20 pounds. And the call was to tell your elected representative, I want you to do this. And the third part was to send something through the mail to the elected representative, something memorable. I remember one campaign, and the motto was, sweeten the deal. And so he sent one pound bags of sugar for every call. So each congressional representative 
got four to 10,000 individual one pound sacks of sugar. Don't you feel bad for that postal official? And their lobbies of their offices were filled to the ceiling with one pound bags of sugar. And each bag said, we want you to sweeten the deal. Vote yes to the funding. They needed 17, they needed seven votes. They got 17. And the votes, the bill then passed through the Senate. They certainly didn't want all that sugar. And it was passed into law. If I have the elegance of humans or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or symbols clashing. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and I even let them take my body for science to learn by it, but am without love, it will do me no benefit. Love is patient, love is kind, it is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. Love is never rude or selfish. It does not take offence, and it never acts like a pompous creature. Love doesn't work for its own interests. It's not quick-tempered or spiteful. Nor does it brood over a perceived injury or a slight where none exists. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things. But love knows right where the line between stupid and understanding lies. Love is never asked to cross into stupid. Dad and I had a multi-year estrangement as we were sorting out our roles. I had a couple of my degrees then and he was moving into a different stage of his life as well. The estrangement lasted at least seven years, and then it ended as abruptly as it had begun. I'd had the second car accident by then, and was now permanently on crutches. Dad carefully enfolded me in his arms in a hug, and asked, Can you forgive your old man for being stubborn and wrong? I replied quietly, I forgave you the next day, Papa. I love you. And he hugged me long, sniffling. I love you too, Annie. My papa bear is in hospice now. He is soon to take that journey that only those who are righteous may ever undertake. I am so very proud of him that he rejoined the church again and started attending mass at the small parish just at the end of his block and then daily mass downtown. This would be a difficult decision for many people, as it is the admission of a past wrong, courage to face your own fears, and the Lord again. And the Lord said, Welcome home, DJ. Where have you been? Ah, that doesn't matter now. You are back with us, and you are welcome, always, with love. When I learned of his return to the church and his renewed friendship with Christ, I immediately got on my knees, singing the praises and thanks to the Saviour of the world, to the Lord God Almighty, and to my special friend, the Holy Spirit. They together played the long and patient game, and there is insufficient time left in the world to thank them for hearing and answering my prayers. So just thank you. You are the one true God. I love you, Papa. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Be not afraid, for all you need to do when you are ready is just reach out your hand for Christ, and he will take your hand, taking you to the place that he prepared for you in his Father's house. Peace to you, my only Papa Bear. To love means loving the unlovable. To forgive means pardoning the unpardonable. Faith means believing the unbelievable. Hope means hoping 
when everything seems hopeless. To do else is to be not human. <laughs>